So you've been um, an airport operations coordinator. Uh, tell me, tell me what you did with that and what you're doing now. Oh, the the million dollar question. It's always <laughs> people, he texted people. He, Matt texts me like all this list of things of like <laughs> things that he does. <laughs> Oh, shoot. It's, it's hilarious, especially when when people ask my wife, what does your husband do? And, and she's just, she has no idea how to explain my job or what I used to do as a coordinator to them. And even now as a management analyst, it's 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 such a um, it's such a niche uh, position. And it, it's such a specified position There's, uh, that it, it's very hard to explain if you don't know the world of aviation, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it as best as possible. Yeah. But as an airport operations coordinator, well, let me back up. First of all, any airport that has airline service, the FAA says you have to, there, here are these rules you have to abide by. If you're going to transport passengers, you have to abide by all these rules and the, the airfield itself needs to needs to abide by these rules. So what airports have done is they've hired people like myself as airport operations coordinators, or they might be named something else, but essentially um, people like myself will go out there out on the airfield and make sure that the airfield is, is up to the F, these FAA rules and regulations. So um that's basically the, that's the meat and potatoes of being a coordinator is that you're making sure the airport is running by the and abiding by these FAA rules and regulations. So that conduct that consists of airfield inspections, ramp inspections, um, perimeter inspections. And each airport is a little bit different. The bigger the bigger the airport generally, the more confined you get. So like when I worked at Bloomington, which is a, a tiny regional airport, we did everything. We did. We did all the airfield stuff, the terminal stuff, and even some land side stuff. Whereas now at at uh, at Harry Reid International, it's very specific. So as a coordinator, I fo- I stayed strictly on the ramp and the airfield. So I'd go out and and inspect the airfield daily. I inspect the ramp daily, just making sure that um, the concrete is in good condition, the paint is in good condition, the lights work, um, the infield areas which are off the pavement edges where the, there might be grass or rocks and the FAA actually gets very specific on some things. For example, um, a, a taxiway center line that airplanes follow when they taxi out to the runway says, if you have this size aircraft, this taxi line needs to be between six inches and 12 inches wide. And the border needs to be black between three and six inches wide. So they get down to very specific distances or sizes, things like that. And, um, and so those are all, those are things that as a coordinator, you know, you're not just out there being like, okay, yeah, the lights work. Oh, there's one out. Yeah. Big deal. Not, not a big deal. The the FAA will actually get down to, okay, if you have a runway and, and this many, these, this many edge lights are unlit, you have to shut the runway down until you fix them. And the, the, those those um, those books that they come out with are called advisory circulars. And if you want something to put you to sleep really quickly, those, <laughs> those would definitely be something you can uh, you can venture into and fall asleep very very quickly. But um, the the advisory circulars are hundreds and hundreds of pages of you know those rules that I was talking about that I was just mentioning. And so we go off of those to make sure that the airfield and ramp is, is, um, you know, is, is up to code and, uh, and somebody needs to be doing that. So imagine any airport with airline service and they've got a team of people that, that go out and do that on a daily, daily basis. And it's, it's 24, seven, 365 a year, no, no breaks. So, um, wow. that's basically the meat and potatoes of it. Now there's a bunch of other things that I would do as well, such as respond to security incidents, aircraft, uh, incidents or emergencies, um, and, uh, you know, we do like wildlife checks, things like that. So there are, and that's why this is a loaded, loaded question that I could, <laughs> spend, I could spend this entire podcast just talking about that, but I'll keep it short, but there are so many other things that a coordinator will do at an airport. Um, it, and it, it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that people don't even realize, you know, yeah. when they go to an airport, they think of the guys that have the wands and then ATC and then, and then that's like pretty much it. 
but there's so much, so much more behind yeah. the scenes. That's, that's one of the jobs and it's very important. Yeah. So is, do you still do that or now what are you up to? So now um, I am a, a management analyst for airside operations. So essentially take what I did as a coordinator out on the airfield, but now I'm inside, uh, inside the terminal. I have my own office. So what I will do is as a coordinator, you'll look like I mentioned those advisory circulars, you kind of reference those a little bit, but if we, if we come and do an issue or if there's, um, you know, say an, an airline says, Hey, we want to bring in this big airplane. Will it fit? Well, we'll be able to fit it at a gate or on a taxiway or a runway. I'll actually dive dive into more of the um, uh, the books or the advisory circulars and do and, and do the, the the deep dive into that where the court when the coordinators don't have the time to do it. So, um, as a management analyst, it's more of the the office side of things rather than actually being boots on the ground out in the airfield type thing. So, okay. um, I'll be um, I'll be, uh, um, doing, uh, another thing that I do is, uh, I, I do a little bit of AutoCAD, the computer uh, engineering program where I'll, um, check to see if an airplane can taxi safely to and from a gate or will it fit on a gate properly? Mm. Cause we have, we have certain rules where there has to be certain wingtip clearances. Um, and I have, and that program allows me to do that. And that actually can get get quite fun and, and challenging. Um, for example, one time uh, when we had the president here, it was a year or two ago, we had to have both Air Force One aircraft here on the ground on a specific holding pad. And one of the things I had to do was use that program to um, basically uh, see if both those aircraft, those 747s could taxi in, have them park and have enough space where one could get out if it needed to around the other one. And so I used this AutoCAD program to do that. And it was pretty cool. And the fact that we had both Air Force One airplanes here at the same time was yeah. actually quite incredible because that almost never happens outside of Andrews Air Force Base. So we were, that was a really, really cool project and experience to be a part of. So wait, were you like nervous doing it or like how... No, because it was yeah. it was a, a few days in advance. It's not like it was uh, hey, gonna be here in on the spot. Air Force One's here. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. no I, I definitely had some time, um, so I wasn't nervous at all. I was I was excited though because it was yeah. and it was a little bit of a challenge, but we were we were able to make it work, and um, uh, but it was very it was very cool, and it was something new because when they proposed that, I was like for this specific holding pad where we put airplanes. We'd never done that before. So I was kind of like, oh, yeah. is this going to work? Is it not? And like I said, it, it ended up working out and it was it was pretty awesome. I was able to get some pretty cool pictures of that, too. So 